Welcome back to the Historian's Craft, guys. So, in this video, uh, we are talking about World War II. Specifically, we are talking about potentially the most important book written on World War II uh, in the Pacific. And that is John Dower's War Without Mercy, Race and Power in the Pacific War. So, when you study World War II, especially in the Pacific, uh, this is one of those things where, you know, narrative histories abound. Um, and then there's also a lot of specialist literature. There's a whole field on, you know, atomic bomb studies. There's a ton of books on the effectiveness of, you know, carpet bombing. Uh, certainly there are tons of memoirs. Certainly every battle has been investigated, like, you know, Guadalcanal. I was reading something the other day on uh, Okinawa. There's a lot of stuff. When you are trying to figure out what to read, though, I mean, how do you determine what's good, what's bad? Well, in this video, like I said, we're talking about what has been hailed as potentially the most important book, period, written on World War II in the Pacific. War Without Mercy. Okay, so why is this the case? Well, um, if you are familiar at all with World War II in the Pacific, to any degree, one of the things you are probably familiar with, okay, is this whole thing, uh, Japanese war crimes, Nanjing, Unit 731, uh, there were massacres in Singapore, there were massacres in, what do you say, Vietnam, uh, the Bataan Death March, etc, etc, etc. I actually wrote my undergraduate thesis on this topic, uh, so I know a lot of this stuff fairly well. That's probably what you're familiar with to a degree. You were definitely familiar with, you know, the battles like Okinawa, Iwo Jima, right? This stuff shows up in pop culture and movies. Um, but there's another side to this as well, right? I mean, it's very easy to look at World War II in Europe as the good war. We beat the Nazis. America, Britain, France, Soviet Union fought against the Third Reich. It's easy to look at that as a just war, as a good war. World War II in the Pacific, though, uh, was a much nastier, darker, more messy subject. Why? Well, the Allies also committed war crimes. Not that they didn't do this in Europe, but it's of a different, uh, shall we say, flavor in the Pacific. So John Dower is one of these major figures in modern Japanese studies. He's a big deal historian. I've got a couple of his books behind me on the shelf somewhere. Um, he's written a ton of articles. And this book, it was published in the 80s, what it does is makes a very specific argument um, about how we should understand World War II in the Pacific theater. So the first thing we should probably do is talk about sources, right? So when you do a, a historical study, typically you use like written sources like diaries, memoirs, newspapers, uh, government documents, stuff like that, right? What John Dower does he uses that, yeah, but he also does uh, investigations and research into what we would understand to be like non-traditional sources. Well, what are these? These are, uh, you know, World War II era propaganda cartoons, propaganda movies, comic strips, um, anecdotes, rumors, stereotypes, stuff of that nature. He also looks at the manner in which other academic disciplines went to war. So World War II is famously called the period when books went to war, right? Like Dr. Seuss was doing like World War II propaganda. Well, American anthropology was doing this as well. There were, um, and Dower draws on a lot of these studies for his book, especially the opening two chapters. There were a lot of anthropological studies which argued or proposed to argue anyway that, well, the Japanese is an uh, inferior being. They are uh, monkey-like. They aren't good pilots because there's something wrong with the inner ear. They have a bad sense of balance, right? Stuff like that crops up. So, John Dower uses those sources from both sides. From the American perspective and the British perspective as well. Uh, and the Japanese perspective. From the Japanese perspective, and he has a whole chapter on this, Westerners... Even though their skin is white, right, they're pale, and in Western culture, white is associated with, like, goodness and holiness. Well, in Japan, the color of your skin doesn't matter. In Japan, what matters, especially in this period, was the color of your soul. The Japanese soul is red. 
Red is the color of the sun, life, vitality. The Western soul was black. Westerners were only demons, yokai, ghosts. Uh, so for the Japanese, from the Japanese perspective, World War II was a holy war fought against demons. From the Western perspective, it was a war fought against uh, yellow monkey men. Not against Germans who were pale looking like the Americans and the British, like the European countrymen. This was a different conflict. Dower argues. It was, in many ways, and perhaps literally, uh, perceived to be a race war. So what's Dower's thesis here in talking about this stuff? His thesis, his central argument, okay, is that, well, war crimes are so horrible on both sides of the equation because both sides, as the war goes on, come to hate each other more and more and more. And they're um, backed up in this hatred by this wartime propaganda. And these general, you know, early 20th century ways of conceiving of the West and the Orient, etc. Uh, Dower's argument, okay, uh, is war hate breeds war crimes. So he breaks this up into a couple of different chapters which seek to basically go through this general argument, this thesis. So part one is, you know, enemies. Chapters are patterns of a race war, war hate, and war crimes. Know your enemies. Uh, then there's, and this is the important thing with the book, he breaks it up into two chunks. There's part two, war in the Western eyes. So here he's talking about lesser men and supermen, right? This idea that, like, there's an Ubermensch and a, uh, an Untermensch. This is famous in, like, Nazi propaganda, Nazi ideology. Uh, but it's also important here because it, it affects how Westerners viewed people living in Asia at the time. There's a chapter titled Yellow, Red, and Black Men. It's exactly what you think about when you hear those terms. And then the important thing is he goes into the Japanese perspective here. So he's talking about, you know, the Japanese conceptions of the pure self, the demonic other, right? Remember I said the Westerner was perceived to have a black soul. We are demons. We are, well, we, I'm an American. We are demons. We are yokai ghosts. We're evil. Um, so fighting against the West is fighting a holy war in the name of the Emperor. So, if you want to understand World War II in the Pacific, yeah, there were tons of narrative histories you could read. There were tons of books and articles and papers about, you know, Guadalcanal and Iwo Jima and Pearl Harbor, but if you really want to get to the heart of it, why things happened the way they did, this is absolutely the first thing you should read. This is key reading, uh, this is central reading for anyone interested not only in that topic, but in Japanese studies in general, especially modern Japan. So, with that guys, I'm going to end the video. Check this out. I'm going to have a link in the description at some point. Um, so, take care, and I will see you all next time.